We're happening. We're happening. It, it, it's happening. We got lots of stuff, great stuff to talk about tonight when it comes to your home voiceover studio. George, what are you going to bring us in your tech update? Uh, you know, some kind of random stuff. Uh, some things that were announced this year at the NAM show or the virtual NAM show. Um, a little blurb about the new Rode VideoMic NTG. Um, a new plugin that could be revolutionary for voiceover recording, but I don't know quite yet. And, uh, well, you know, the usual yeah. tech stuff. Yeah. And we're going to talk about, should I get a new Mac mini? And if we have time, we're <laughs> going to talk about mud flaps and we're not talking about trucker stuff. We're talking about those <laughs> acoustic panel things. So yeah. if you've got a question, throw it in the Facebook chat room or on YouTube or wherever it is you're watching. And we will get back to that question tonight as well. So stay tuned. Time for a voiceover body shop tech talk right now. From the outer reaches, they came, bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard. The voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, making the complex simple, debunking the myths of what it takes to create great sounding audio, answering your questions, showing you the latest and greatest in VO tech, and having a dandy time doing it. Welcome to Voiceover Body Shop. Tech Talk. VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, Remote Studio Connections for Everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt, VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training, J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Well, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever it is you happen to be watching this show. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is voiceover body shop or VO B S tech talk, tech talk, tech talk, tech talk, not tick tock, not tick tock, but tech talk, tech talk. I may have been, well, let's see. Anyway, uh, we're here to talk about your home voiceover studio and, uh, and how to make yourself sound the way you're supposed to sound what it's supposed to sound like or is what it's supposed to sound like going that way. I never remember when I'm going right or left. Maybe if I was writing it in Hebrew, I could be going that way. <laughs> um, anyway, um, how's life been with you? It's in your newer, newer digs. It's going pretty well. Um, there's less to do with my daughter when she's here, you know, going to the pool was always fun, but it can't right now. Everything's shut down. So, you know, fortunately she keeps herself Better, more busy thanks to electronics you know she's got a laptop an ipad and an iphone <laughs> and she will no, use them right. all What's that stuff simultaneously <laughs> so yeah we're doing fine here it's um uh you know just trying to be creative to find new ways to keep ourselves sane also my girlfriend is back in iran to be with her family and checking in our dad on, on her dad who has a health scare so you know, it's it's a little bit stressful time, but we're doing okay. Yeah. Now I'm finally recovered from that kidney stone a couple of weeks ago. Hallelujah. My goodness, you want to talk <laughs> about some pain. But oh. somebody sent me some really good gourmet cookies. And I want to thank them again for that. Because and there was nothing special in those cookies? There was nothing, nothing special, special except a lots of layers of flavor. You know, you'd, 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 cookies are cookies. But these weren't cookies. It was like... I taste a little bit of this. I taste a nice. little bit of that. It was like, I, okay. it made me savor them. That's a good skill to have. I maybe they were magic cookies. 
They were. I was not Cookie Monster with you. <laughs> anyway. Uh, uh, we got lots of tech talk to, to cover tonight, and we're glad you're here. Again, if you've got a question, throw it in the chat room about your home voiceover studio, about equipment or technique, or but not marital advice. We don't want to talk about that. Um, anyway, what's in your update? Oh, wait. Yeah, you're up. It's the corniest lead in sound yeah, I ever find another one. That's so good. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. So, so first of all, I want to get out of the way. This it's not tech stuff, but there's this thing called Clubhouse. Everybody's talking about it. It feels a little bit, well, the, they're trying to make it feel very exclusive. There's a couple of ways they're doing this. One, you have to be invited in. You can request to be in there, but unless somebody that's already in there says, hey, come on in, you can't get in. So that's one way it's kind of exclusive. And the other way is that it's only iOS. So you have to have an iPhone or an iPad. Now, I know there's people out there going, ah, Android, you know what, go buy it. And used iPad mini for a hundred bucks and have some device that runs Apple iOS so that you can f feel more connected to a lot of the universe that unfortunately is developed in the iOS environment first because Apple makes it easier for developers. That's why. Um, but anyway, Clubhouse is a unique new social media platform that's completely audio based. There's absolutely no typing. There's no video. All there is are a bunch of little icons showing who's talking and uh, the ability to host clubs or create clubs and then host shows and in your club and then invite speakers in to speak. Um, it's very interactive. You can uh, have people ask questions of you or your, you can be on a panel and then have people ask questions in the panel. It's an amazing new uh, platform. And obviously, voiceovers, voice actors have taken to it because it is a voice-only medium. It's a vocal medium. Yeah. It's a no-brainer. So uh, anyway, I've been spending a little bit of time in there. If you jump into that platform, uh, you know, you'll, you'll probably be swept into it by your compadres who are already uh, using it. I think, it's, I think it's worthwhile spending a little time in there because if you're new to voiceover, it's a great way to learn. And if you're a seasoned veteran, it's a great way to reconnect and chat with others in the business and have a little bit of a social time. Yes, we've already been doing that in Zoom and other things, but sometimes a new platform is kind of fun. So anyway, that's Clubhouse. And yes, I've been in there quite a bit um, lately. It's now, on my phone. I got to check it out and figure out. How to do we'll it. see Dan. On there. And it's like you just got on TikTok, didn't you? Yeah, a couple of weeks ago. I I anything, but. I'm only on there because my daughter wanted to be on there last year or two years ago. And uh, so I wanted to make sure I could check in on her. And <laughs> it's funny how at first you're like, I got to see what she's up to. And after about a year goes by, you're like, everything's okay, honey. Yeah, dad, I don't show my face on there and it's only cartoons. Okay, honey. You just hope nothing goes wrong. Right. Um, Nam, the NAM show or some flavor of NAM show happened a couple of weeks ago and it was just an on stream online thing. I didn't really do anything with the NAM show itself. I signed up and, but eh, there wasn't really much for me to, I really was relevant. So, but this time of year is when companies start releasing new products. And so a few things came out and popped up and I looked at soundonsound.com, uh, which is an awesome audio. Great magazine. Music. It's a really good magazine. I'm, I'm so tempted to sign up for an online uh, subscription. It's forty five bucks for a year, for the PDF. It's not cheap, but their articles and their reviews and everything are really top notch. So they had an, a twenty twenty one Sound on Sound awards and gave out awards to some products. You guys have heard us talk about the Cloud Lifter. A million times. Heck, we've had Roger Cloud. We've interviewed him on the show. It's a product that was revolutionary because it allowed you to plug very low output dynamic microphones into low gain devices like a Scarlett. They have 50 something dB of gain. Not nearly as not enough for like a ribbon mic or some of the dynamic mics. So he invented this product. Well, 
years go by, many, many companies have made their own versions of this cloud lifter. But this fellow, this company has come out. We're like, well, if we're going to have cloud lifters, why can't they have something more going on, something more interesting? So should I throw that up on the screen, Sue. I've got the screen share from the article. Um, on the on the Sound on Sound website, there's products from a company called Tierra. And um, they are mic boosters with color, or rather, in the parlance of these guys, flavors. Mm. Chili, vanilla, pepper, cocoa, salt. I think it's a really, really clever idea. Now, is this something that's super relevant to a voice actor? I don't know. But I will say this. if I know people sometimes buy outboard mic preamps, or they buy this plug-in or that plug-in, because they're trying to get some new sound, something that's got a color to it or a flavor to it. This could be some way to give it that a try without over committing, buying some really crazy expensive, very uh, elaborate channel strip, you know, with tubes and all that, and give you a new way to give you a way to get some different color out of the microphones that you already have. So I don't know. I just thought it was kind of interesting. And I found that the the fellow who is doing the video on this product, well, I'm not going to play the whole thing, but here's a little taste of these of the product. Oh, can't wait. This is the best accent ever, right? Now <laughs> you guys can go, you guys can go check out Tierra's website and watch the whole video about their product. But um, anyway, it's an it's a unique idea. Um I don't know, Dan. Do you ever see foresee you wanting to experiment with something? I mean, I know you like microphones, and you've had a lot of mics. But right. have you ever thought about changing the color of a mic you already have? You know, I'm I'm not a singer, at least not a very good one, um, and I, I really don't worry about that that much. You know, to me, my philosophy is always, you know, the idea is not to sound great. The idea is to sound like you. If you're a good voice actor, you already sound great. You just want to capture you as you exist. If you're nerdy and you want to play with stuff and have fun on TikTok and all these other things, yeah, you can use it for that. Would I ever use it on an audition or on a, on a production? Probably not. Mm -hmm. I, I'm finding a lot of people have gotten cloud lifters because someone told them that, oh, the great mic for voiceover is an SM7B. You're, saw, you're, you're, you're running into that a lot. You know? I saw that. That okay. Here's a reason why this mic is being sold to voice actors. I got the latest Sweetwater catalog. Okay. Guess Me what the too. description for the SM7B says? Voiceover. Good for voiceover. ADR. Definitely. If there's any mic that it is not good for, is it's ADR. Good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then it says uh, podcasting and broadcasting. Well, those last two are correct. Absolutely. But it is definitely not an ideal voiceover microphone. Every time I hear people try to gussy it up, get the output high enough to be a good voiceover mic, so much noise comes along with it, even with the cloud lifter. Yeah. It ends up being so noisy. It just, it just doesn't make sense. And when you buy a $400 mic and a $150 cloud lifter, think about yeah. other mics you can buy at that price point. Right. Are you getting $800 worth of sound there? Probably not. You know, yeah. I see a lot of vocalists using it because people who are singing are putting out a lot more sound pressure. They're louder. And therefore, uh, an interface and a preamp is going to pick it up without having to add a whole lot of gain to it. Yep. So I, I, I think people need to stop thinking that that's a great voiceover mic and just listen to what we say. Get a studio condenser mic. It's really the best way to do things. I think some well, people are getting it because they think there's not going to be a lot of background noise, but folks, feel, folks are feeling a little deprived because when I played that video, the audio didn't come along with it. So I'm going to play 10 seconds with okay. the audio. Hopefully you guys hear this. Hello, everybody. I'm Javier. I'm the co-founder of Tierra Audio. And I want to share with you something that really excites us. It's called flavors. Flavor is a collection of analog inline microphone preamplifiers. They are designed to bring seven different sonic flavors. Okay, you get right. you, you, you talk you, about you, flavor. You, you get the idea. There's a lot of flavor in that video. <laughs> <laughs> Besides the guy's amazing accent, um, you know, he was speaking into an SM7B, 
<laughs> in a completely reverberant room, you know, doing everything wrong for voiceover, right? But I just thought that was entertaining. But it sounded colorful. It certainly did. Um, I don't know how to. I don't know how to make this make sense for voiceover, but I just it's just something that tangentially was related. So I thought it was interesting. Another thing that's you know trying to solve a problem that maybe we should solve in the room first, rather than trying to fix it in post. Well, here's a plugin that's going to try to fix another problem, and this is um, a plugin called Soothe. And uh, Soothe, the idea behind Soothe is the idea that you should be able to, by using the right kind of compression, you should be able to smooth out things that don't sound very good in the audio. Um, I'm going to share that tab as well. I didn't, I didn't set it up in advance. Sorry about that. But let me uh, bring it up so you guys can see it. And there's no audio to share here. I'm just going to let you see what it actually looks like. There we go. That's the Soothe plugin. So what Soothe does, you guys are familiar with a de right? Absolutely. So, yeah, exactly. So a de will, uh, when you tune it correctly, smooth out sibilance so that those sharp S's don't jump out, which some voices and some people, the way they deliver, they have too much sibilance and the microphone just exaggerates it. So what this one is, is kind of like a de on steroids. And so it attempts through its own automated process to find any other things that resonate or ring or jump out of the frequency band. Sibilance, um, muddiness. So like if the sound is very bottom heavy and lacks clarity, um, and it basically finds all those frequencies that stand out and tries to squash them down or soothe the sound. I, it, if it works in Audition, I will try it in Audition. It's a standard plugin standard that works on any platform. Yeah, so, uh, sort of like a, a, your basic parametric equalizer. It is. And I think what makes it interesting to me is theoretically the smartness of it. Because as an engineer, as a geek, and someone that's used all these plugins, I could make like a multi band compressor or whatever, and I could make this try to emulate this. But the thing about this that makes it interesting to me is the, is the, I guess, maybe machine learning part of it. The part where it listens, determines what shouldn't be there, and tries to suppress it. Um, I'm talking about a plugin I haven't tried yet. So I'm going to be giving it a try. In fact, um, I think we might do a little pro audio suite quick bite about this on our next episode and have the uh, all the geeks in our pro audio suite uh, room that our engineers throw some time at this and see if it's useful. Useful. Um, it's not cheap at two hundred dollars. So if you got two hundred dollars to spend, first try to work out the issues you're having in your studio with your acoustics and it's your cheap. mic technique. Yeah. yeah, start there. That's where you should spend your money first. Um, a couple more things: the Rode Video Mic NTG, interesting microphone. So this mic is sort of like Rode throwing kind of everything at it and trying to make the ultimate do all microphone. It's a mic that was really designed to be lightweight and very compact as a shotgun mic that works on a camera or could be used on a boom. And it also has a audio interface. It's USB as well. But the problem was the USB feature was not compatible with iOS. So if you want to use it with an iPhone, which I thought was the ultimate way to use this mic, it's very small and light and it sounds really good, plug it into an iPhone. Well, you couldn't do it, but now you can. Somehow they managed to update the firmware so you can plug a video mic NTG directly into an iOS device. So why is this mic inter interesting? Think of the Apogee mic and all of its issues. The fact that it it's very, very easy to pop. Right. It's a cardioid mic, so it's gonna pick up a little bit more background noise. This is a shotgun mic, a true shotgun mic. So it's going to be easier to use in less than ideal situations, like in a car, for example, or working on the road. So it could be the ultimate throw it in your glove box or throw it in your bag mic that you use with the iPhone. $250 range. There's a picture of it. Thanks, Sue. Hmm. Um, as you can see, it's it's got that really awesome liar shock mount. Um, you can plug headphones into it. 
I, I won't even go through the list because this is a massive list of features it has. It has safety track, so it'll record the main track at your standard level, but in a safety track at minus 20 dB. It's it's all built into this little guy. So pretty cool. I'd love to find out who of you have tried it out and, and use it. Um, and if you did, put comments below. I'd love right. to hear what who likes it. The last thing I want to talk about, and this is with Dan, is Dan's been asking me the last couple of weeks. We do actually talk to each other. We do. <laughs> like, he's having some. I do this? He's having some gear FOMO, and I totally get it. FOMO, baby. <laughs> Dan's thinking about getting the new Mac Mini M1. Here's Should the I? thing. <laughs> Should I? Right. It's this is a tough question. Actually, we're at this like precipice because Dan and I have the same 2018 oh. Mac Minis. We have the same exact one, as far as I know. It's a six core i5 chip. And so it's pretty darn fast. It does everything we've thrown at it. No problem so far, right? Right. Um, I put 32 gigs of memory in mine. I don't know. What, how, do you know how much How much you have in yours, Dan? I don't know. Enough. Enough, right? <laughs> I, I bought it with eight and then I put 32 gig in because it was the last Mac that I could actually upgrade myself. I think I, think I put more RAM into it too. I just don't remember. Yeah. It was so inexpensive. I didn't go to the desk there. It's like, I know you're under there. Right. So so the question is, all right, is this the time to upgrade? Okay. So let's talk about the pros. The pros are you can buy the M1 with 16 gigabytes of memory for about, I think it's $899. The current street price of the computers that Dan and I have are really darn close to that price. So it's practically... A break even, 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 right? <laughs> yeah. It's a break even. Makes it a no brainer. But right. is the technology a huge improvement or, is, or are, there, are there still bugs to it? And is everything, all my stuff going to still work with it? I guess there's only yes. one way to find out. <laughs> there's one way to find <laughs> I would recommend that you do, if you're really serious about it, do buy the new M1 Mac Mini. Um, clone over your system, migrate it over, whatever. Just import everything over to, to the new machine and give it a shot. I, I've tested a bunch of stuff with the M1 MacBook Air. Um, other than things that other than things that said we don't run on Big Sur, and there was a few things, but that start that problem starting to go away because everybody's now pretty much supporting it, um, except Pro Tools, <laughs> but that's nothing new. Um, everything pretty much I've thrown on there has worked, including, even though it's not supported, the Apollo. I got the Apollo to work on the M1. So, Dan, you don't use the Apollo, but you've got the Scarlet, you've got the Roadcaster. Caster, which I love, which is a great unit. What other gear do you have to plug into this thing? Uh, not, not a whole lot. Yeah, just this webcam. The Brio. And, is it the Brio yeah, webcam? Yeah, with the high-definition uh, camera. and. Logitech. Yeah, but not a whole lot else. I mean, you know me, keeping it simple. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so just have a couple of different mic inputs. So the Roadcaster and not much else. A couple of extra external hard drives to, you know, clear off the internal drives on that thing. Well, Dan, I think for the, in the interest of science. Okay. Go buy the M1 MacBook Air, MacBook, uh, Mac Mini. Sorry, get the Mac Mini. Yeah. Clone your system over, get it yeah. all up and running on the M1 and, and, and report back to us. Okay. Well, let us know how it goes. <laughs> the next time we do this show, we'll probably be going through it. And if it's like, <laughs> we'll know. Okay. <laughs> right. We don't pre-flight anything. We just, we do it all right, <laughs> right to the air. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think it's been a couple of months since it's been out and it's smoothed out. This was one of the smoothest launches. I think of any brand new Apple computer that I can think of considering it's such a new, um, internally, it's all new. Um, it seems to be working out exceptionally well. So um, I know Sean Daly got a MacBook Pro M1 and a Mac Mini M1, and he's loving them. So yeah. if you want somebody to commiserate about, um, he would be somebody. Yeah. But um, I've had good experiences. I just haven't committed to it. It's not the centerpiece of my studio. But Dan, you've got a MacBook Pro 2015, I think. So yeah, you've got your bases covered. Right. So no, yeah, I, go buy one. Yeah. Tell your wife I said yes. No, it's okay. She doesn't, <laughs> she doesn't have to know. 
especially <laughs> since it's an even trade. So you know. exactly, it is a break. We can all relate to that. Out there. For now, it is pretty much an, you know as time goes on, it won't be so much a even a break even. But for now, it certainly it certainly is. So yeah, all we'll right. see. We'll report. Dan will report back. I shall. I shall. And you know what I'm doing first thing tomorrow morning. <laughs> Or tonight after I post the show. Exactly. Um, we were going to talk about mud flaps and room, room acoustics. Maybe we'll get to that in a little bit. But we got a ton of questions from you guys. And that's what George and I really like to do. So we'll answer those right after the break. And I guess it's just stay tuned. We'll be right back with those. Okay. This is VOBS. Proven anybody can have a show these days. So for the first time ever, VoiceOverEssentials.com has created a discount coupon code in honor of February 14th, Valentine's Day, with a store-wide discount of 14%. While checking out at VoiceOverEssentials.com, just enter VOBS14 in the discount code box and your discount will be deducted automatically. You know, nothing says, I love you, like a colorful LED recording sign, or a Portabooth Plus or Pro for those romantic trips will all be ticking again before long. One caution, the promotion ends at midnight on February 14th Central Standard Time. So start shopping. Remember, just enter VOBS14 in the discount code box, and your discount will be deducted automatically voiceoveressentials.com for all your home voiceover studio needs. Thanks, Harlan. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? Stick around. You don't want to miss this. Look what you made me do. Power 103.9. At Target, we want you to come as you are. Be comfortable. Uh, okay, maybe not bathrobe comfortable. Pants for the customer in aisle four, please. Nuevo México necesita un cambio. La representante Michelle Lujan Grisham ha luchado por nuestro estado en la Cámara de Representantes. Watch anywhere, anytime on an unlimited number of devices. Sign in with your Netflix account to watch instantly at Netflix.com. The ice cream maker is a big risk that can have huge rewards until you forget to turn it on. Well, that's it, guys. Time is up. Hey, it's JMC. Thanks for watching the voiceover body shop. If you're demo ready or looking to get there, check out jmcdemos.com and see a sample of our work. Now let's get back to Dan and George and this week's tech wisdom. Well, it's time to talk about Source Connect. Source Connect is the tool that any voice actor who really wants to be playing at that next level really wants to have in their toolkit. It's a software that runs on Mac or Windows, and it is a well, it definitely is has become a standard in terms of how studios are doing remote production. Um, and at this point, saying remote production is almost redundant because almost everything is recorded remotely these days and will be done that way for the foreseeable future. I remember just a year ago when things were starting to get bad, um, you know, we all kind of panicked. We had a surge of home studios come together. And Source Connect was on the tip of everyone's tongue. And that's when I produced a video on how to get started with Source Connect. So I would definitely check that out so you can feel more confident. At, you can go to George the uh, George the dot tech. I know my own website, uh, slash SC, and take a look at that so that you can feel like you're confident when it's time to get Source Connect running. Get yourself that demo, too. You don't need to have an iLock dongle key thingamabob. You can just sign up and put the license right on your computer and get up and running right away so you know that you're confident that when you're when you're asked upon, you'll be ready to use Source Connect. But anyway, we appreciate Source Elements, Source Elements for supporting us for so long now. And uh, we'll be right back to get to all your tech questions. Yeah. Hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching Voice Over Body Shop. Can I get a take two on that commercial? No, sorry. I'm just kidding. You know, live reads and, you know, you've been doing it for 10 years. You're getting it ain't a read, man. If it was a read, it'd be far, <laughs> far worse. <laughs> Trust me. I'm better speaking extemporaneously. Yeah. I am no voice actor. Well, but I'm sure hanging out with them, you've gotten better at it. Maybe it's just well, hanging out. Who knows? Maybe, maybe I think I'm getting better at it. <laughs> if you gave me a script, I would 
I would sound just like anybody else. <laughs> yeah. Well, as you know, George and I are experts on home voiceover studios. That's what we do. Uh, I'm a professional voice actor. George is not, but he is a professional vo audio engineer. A professional voice listener. That's true. And, and trying to keep things the way they're supposed to sound. And if you need help with your home voiceover studio, there's really only two places to go. Everybody else can give you like, well, this is what makes me sound great. Right. We don't do that for you. We don't do what it is that makes us sound great. We're going to find out what you sound like and make sure that how you sound is how it comes over on a hard drive somewhere on a file that you sound like you. The idea of a home voiceover studio is not to sound great. The idea is to sound like you. There's an awful lot of people out there saying, oh, manipulate it this way and do this and do that. If you're just starting out, you really want to keep it simple. Once you've been at it for a while and there are certain things perhaps you have to do, you learn some techniques and stuff. We had Debbie Derryberry on last week who was talking about how she had to learn all this stuff. Having the stuff is not the same as knowing how or when or why to use it. But George mm -hmm. and I know that stuff, and we try to keep it simple for you. And if you have, you know, a problem with your studio or you really have no idea what how to start out, you can work with one of us. And if you want to work with George, where do they go? You head over to georgethe.tech and you check out my massive menu of options. Not quite the yeah. Greek restaurant, but getting there. There's a lot of stuff on there, a lot of things you can select. Uh, you can get a sound check at the at the bargain end of the price range and get your audio listened to. Um, or I can design your dream studio or create a processing chain for your Apollo system. Whatever you need, um, I do it all over there. But Dan does the same thing, just a little different. Over at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Com. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, I work with a lot of beginners, people who are like, uh, I'm, I'm a techno this, or I, I'm, I'm not tech savvy. You know, it's like, you don't have to be. I think people forget that it's, you know, you may be looking at a computer, but you got to think about, it's like a cassette recorder. Play, stop, record. Yeah. And people just need to change what they look at. So yeah, I try to the right software, damn it. That's right. Use the easiest software, not the most complex software. And mm -hmm. by the way, all software sounds the same initially. Some things can do more than others, but the thing is, is if you do it right up front, if your acoustics are good, if you use your microphone properly, and you set your levels, which we talked about on the last Tech Talk, properly, that's really all you're required to do. And we, I'll show you how to do that. So go over to Home VoiceOver Studio. Dot com. Well, let's get into some of these massive amount of questions we have tonight. And we'll start off with uh, David Curel, who says, uh, now this is, try and follow what he's saying here. It's, uh, right. let's say, let's just say, I'm using a microphone with a frequency response of 80 hertz to 12 kilohertz. All right. Basically the range of the human voice. And in post-processing, which we have to ask why I apply bass roll off at 60 Hertz. Why do I hear changes in audio? Meaning that there is a low cut, which I can hear after applying the EQ. Isn't it supposed to give no effects and 60 Hertz is outside the frequency response. Thanks. Now I, you know, once I read that slowly, I understood what he was talking about. Uh, well, a lot could depend on what he's listening to it on. You know, headphones, monitors, that sort of thing. Something tells me that perhaps he's not hitting the 60 hertz. He might be hitting something else. What do you think? When people think of a microphone of having a frequency response of 80 hertz to 12 kilohertz, I don't even know of a microphone in existence that has exactly that frequency response. That sounds like a, you know, like a like a Radio Shack Electret condenser mic, actually. Yeah, a mic that doesn't have any pickup below 80 hertz pretty much doesn't exist. And the reason is, is when you, and a lot of mics have like a switch on them, like this Audio-Technica has a low cut switch. When you engage it, it on this mic, I believe, it, in, it turns on a 80 hertz low cut but that isn't a fall off the cliff low cut. In other words, when the sound gets to 80, 
it doesn't disappear into the abyss. The what, what there's what's called a slope, and you'll see on the specifications it'll say something like 12 dB per octave or something like that. So as you go below 80, it's sloping off on an angle and getting quieter and quieter as you go down. So what's going on in your case is, well, you must A, have a massive voice, <laughs> and B, yeah. you probably have maybe a slightly resonant studio that really resonates at that frequency. So when you add another roll off at 60, you're still hearing a little bit of that low end that still remains at 60 hertz when you have a mic that's cutting off below 80. Kind of hard to explain this with just hand gestures, but if you, if you understand what I'm saying, the mic doesn't just cut off at 80. Right. It starts reducing low end at 80, but it's not just a flat cutoff. It, it's a right. slope. Right. And, and uh, if you can hear under 80 hertz, you know, you probably have long ears and a lot of fur. <laughs> it's really yeah, you're probably feeling it as much as you're hearing it. But yeah, you're going to get some of that resonance that can still exist below 80 hertz with some men's voices. So it ain't everybody that has that kind of low-end resonance. There's a few. We won't mention Yeah, not that. many. Yeah. Uh, why don't you take the one from Juan Estevez? Okay. Hey, Juan. Um, I was gifted a 2013 iMac, and it's running oh, High Sierra. Uh, High Sierra 1013.6. Is there a way to change the previous owner's Apple ID to my own without wiping it clean, aka so I can keep all the apps? <laughs> I'm sure that's. I'm sure that's what you're getting at there, Juan. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> Hi, Siri. <laughs> Thanks so much for interrupting the show. Um. Well, Juan, what you want to do is just install a new user account or set up a new user account under your name. And then once it's set up as an administer account, erase the old account. Now, when you erase the old account, it'll wipe out all his personal information, his Apple ID information, but it, the applications will remain behind. But you can't change the Apple ID to an account. Um, let me think. If you were to change the Apple ID to your Apple ID, any software that's tied to that, uh, the old Apple ID, like a licensed software, something he bought from the App like, Store. Like on my MacBook that you, you programmed? <laughs> exactly. Some of those apps we installed years ago, right, were yep. installed under my Apple ID. Um, you're going to lose access to those apps anyway. So it's pretty hard to fool the software licensing gods. If you don't have the license to run something and it's not your user account, chances are you're not going to be able to run it. So you're either going to have to be stuck with the old Apple ID and just keep using his personal information or commit and and move forward. The, the apps will still be there, but the next time you launch them, they might say, hi, who are you? <laughs> so be ready for that. Yeah. Here's a question I have been waiting all week to answer. I want Tony, to see how you pronounce this name. Tony Hooverls. Close enough. Oh. Oh, it's um, Hoover? Okay. Oh, it's Sue, Hoover. Sue let us know it's Hoover. Okay, we'll it's, just take that out. Sorry, Tony Tim. Hoover. <laughs> uh, is, is there any... But let's get to the question, because the question is one we, that comes across a lot, especially from people who are sending in samples and stuff. They say, is there any benefit to recording voiceovers in stereo, hmm. I saw a video in which the pro voiceover artist, I forget who, unfortunately, fortunately, actually, you said, it said you should record in mono, but process and deliver in stereo. Well, I would think that it depends on who you're sending it to. Industry standard. If you're sending in a file to an engineer who's going to take it and do all the processing because it's none of your business. If you send that in in two-track stereo, one, it doesn't sound any different. Right. So the industry standard is always send it in one-track mono because when they're taking it and they're throwing it in their multi-tracking and stuff, they don't want to be messing with, you know, if it's uneven or if it's in stereo. The fact of the matter is you can't get stereo out of one microphone. 
it's only one one sound so you don't yeah, need good. there's no spatial awareness or differentiation around it it's one track and industry standard mm -hmm. is mono so deliver your files in mono because stereo doesn't sound any better with one spot in one place i never yeah, it's just that one. the same signal duplicated so there's a left and a right and they're the same signal so yeah, don't confuse the engineer. Don't send them something stereo when, when then because if you send it in stereo, then they're wondering, wait, is there stereo uh, material in here? Is there stereo content? Is the voice going to be panning left and right? You know, it's no, don't do it. The, the only reason to ever do it is if the client who's paying you says to do it, and then you go, you got it. <laughs> that would be the only reason ever to do it. Otherwise, yeah. no. Yeah. I think sometimes if you send us something in stereo or in two track, it can get round filed before they get to the slate. It could happen. If so, I mean, I, I know when I receive one in stereo, the first thing I do is delete the second channel. So I, I don't even want to be thinking about it in stereo. So yeah, I mono it out in, in Adobe audition. So yeah. I can get an idea of really what's going on there. Cause otherwise yeah. it's like, this is confusing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you only have one yeah. mouth as Sue says. Yeah. Yeah. Jeff Holman asks, oh, you, I'll let you ask this one, answer this one. Okay. Hey, Jeff. Uh, Arlux claims that their four inch thick foam panels are three times better at controlling the low end frequencies than the two inch ones. And that by using a, the thicker panels, one may not need to use bass traps. Are the thicker panels worth the extra price? Note two inches are $30 a piece. Four inches are fifty dollars a piece, directly from Arlex. Yes, definitely. Um, most of the booths that I hear, whisper rooms, closets, everything that are just sort of wallpapered in two inch th two inch thick foam, sound pretty lousy. Um, and it's not just the bass frequencies; it's the mid bass, it's the mid range. The four inch panels have way better um, mid to low mid range absorption. And, um, so if you're going to go foam, um, I would recommend definitely going with four inch thick foam. It, the, here's the thing though, two inch thick rock sole or mineral wool, I think works just as well as the four inch foam. So when you start really comparing prices, you're going to find that the panels wrapped in fabric that look way nicer are easier to install. Um, have and are probably going to last a lot longer have almost the same exact performance as the four inch foam so the only reason to use four inch foam i think is because you're trying to work in difficult spots like where you got to cut it into weird shapes and fit it around things you know that's where the foam is kind of nice but if you're just working with blank walls i definitely recommend the the roxel based um panels i think you get better performance with less space taken up so there's that. All right. Question here from, and now here's a name, uh, Sasha de Gogol using. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Formatting is fun. <laughs> Somebody's really got to fix their time. We're having a good time tonight, aren't we? <laughs> okay. All right. I'll anyway. have what he's having. <laughs> Interesting question. <laughs> he's, he's just messing with us. He wants just a weird, weird funny, made-up last name. <laughs> Sasha de Gog, or de Gogh, depending on... Uh, anyway. Uh, she says, I'm using the neat Worker B mic. Got a nice stack set up with EQ that works for me. Guess what, Sasha? You don't work for you, and you don't hire you. <laughs> <laughs> I, the only way we can tell is if we listen. Um, uh, light compression, D click, and a bit of D mm -hmm. She's talking in a southern accent with a with a it's a guy, it says uh, Sue. So. Oh, okay. Anyway, I send an audition between minus 12 and minus 6 dB, but sometimes it seems like it's a bit quiet for a finished version. So many clients want finished products. I do normalize to minus 3 dB too. Just wondering if that could be considered an absolute final product ready to go to press. Is there something else to add to my chain to get a final polished product, assuming they are not engineers? Uh, everything you could possibly need to do to your audio is generally in your, your workstation audio, your digital audio workstation, you know, yeah. your, your Twisted Wave, your Adobe Audition, yep. 
uh, you know, Reaper. Uh, they all have compression. Acid. Yeah, they all have compression. They all have EQ. Right. They all have the limiters. Best, the best thing to do is to let George and I hear it. Uh, you know, send it to one of us, and we'll do an analysis for it. Uh, and because I think what what we normally will do is try and hear the raw sound of your studio and then bring it to where it needs to be. If correction should be there, I think people are way overusing processing because they have it as opposed to understanding why they should use it. Yeah. I mean, just a little bit of the right things. It's kind of like seasoning a, a great tasting gourmet dish. Um, you overdo any one thing and it ruins it. It dominates the, the taste, you know, too much salt, for example. So, um, you know, that's something I've been working on for a while is trying to find what little bits of this and little bits of that will give it that final polished sound. I mean, that's what engineers spend years and years studying how to do after all. Right. Right. So you can't expect, they can't expect the actor to just have that secret sauce in their system. You know, that's something it takes years to, to learn how to do. Right. And so if, if you sound good up front, they don't care. Yeah. The engineers that the engineers, they don't want the audio process. The clients that don't hire engineers are now expecting you to make that judgment call. Right. And that's where things get a lot harder. So talk to one of us. We'll, we'll steer you in the right direction, but I, I'll, I'll make processing if it's appropriate for the needs of that particular project. And uh, based on the, what the client actually wants. Right. And it's usually just little tiny things for correction, not like major expansion compression type things. I'm yeah. Not- Audiobook mastering is maybe the one I use the most radical processing because the spec requirements are very extreme. You know, must be, be average level exactly between these ranges and, and all this. So I use quite a lot more processing for that. But a lot of other stuff, very light, light, light processing. It shouldn't sound processed. If it sounds processed, we're doing it wrong. Yeah. All right. We got a question here that's, uh, I, I, I guess, you know, a matter of opinion, but you go for it. <laughs> the one from Ron? Ron Montgomery. Um, have you looked at the Antelope Audio Zen Go Synergy Core yet? <laughs> Synergy Core. Um, it looks like a direct competitor to the Apollo Twin at a better price, and the reviews so far say it has better preamps. According to whom? <laughs> to audio nerds. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Here's my here's my two cents. I won't waste a lot of time on it. It is very compelling looking. I would like to demo it, but I don't trust the company Antelope Audio, unfortunately. And the reason is because they are a very small company out of Bulgaria. And when things break and go wrong, you don't have a very easy access to great rapid support to get things running and fixed. The only place that fixes these happens to be here in Burbank. I happen to know the shop that repairs them. And if something goes wrong, you're going to be waiting a couple of weeks for parts to be sent from Bulgaria. So for that reason, I'm very hesitant to recommend Antelope audio stuff to home voiceover studios where they just have one interface and everything runs through that one interface in a big commercial studio. You've got like 16 different preamps and whatever you can afford to have one thing that needs to be in the shop once in a while, not the end of the world, but yeah, I, I, they got to prove me wrong. Antelope needs to prove me wrong. (laughs) They need to show that their gear is way more reliable now, but I'm not sure that's true yet. All righty. A uh, question from J. Horace Black it says, uh, Hey, Dan and George, great to see you too in 2021. Great to see you, J. Uh, yesterday, yesterday, I had an issue with my Mac Mini where all the video audio that I played was out of sync. Okay, we've seen that happen. Sounded like everything was playing very fast or everyone had, uh, everyone was taking a helium dose. <laughs> Had to do a reset nav RAM and pram on my Mac. Does this mean my Mac Mini is going out soon, or is this something that needs to be done from time to time? Mac Mini works for this. Sounds more like hmm. an interface issue. That does uh, mean it sounds like a hardware thing. Yeah, the, you know, like the... I, yeah. I mean, that happens with with my Rodecaster every now and again. That kind of sound it starts to get crumbly, or it starts to Cylon, like you like to say, mm-hmm. and. You know, what I do is, you know, like I always say, when in do reboot, I turn it off, turn it back on, comes back on. 
I think it's a digital mismatch that happens occasionally with playing back files, especially stuff from YouTube and uh, various yeah, other I mean, places. He was, he was very careful not to give us all the information. Yeah. <laughs> so we can't really give yeah. him an accurate answer. But uh, if you're trying to convince somebody who uh, is the budget master of your household that you need a new Mac Mini M1, now's the time. Go buy one. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you got my blessing. Yeah. You get <laughs> one from Professor North here. Hey, Fred. Uh, this is from Fred North. Uh, I'll be moving shortly, and my new studio will be uh, an 11 by 13 room. Nice size. Oh, nice size room. Typical yeah. nice size bedroom. Is there any advantage of placing my workstation in the middle of the room? Um, I'm using a 416 microphone mostly, sometimes my TLM 103. Um, the room will be well treated as my past room was. Um, I don't know if there's any advantage other than I think the cool thing about being in the center of the room is you can sort of have your desk be in that executive power position. You know, for Feng Shui, you're looking at, you can look at the door, you know, and see people come in. Isn't that like, the executive thing? It's like being on the bridge of the enterprise. You know, you know, it's like the, the desk is like, so that the, the, your back is to the wall, you're looking out into the room, you know, the Oval Office, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I don't know. That would be the only advantage I can think of, Fred. It's certainly more logistically challenging to hide all the cabling and not trip on stuff. Um, I did do a studio for a guy named Mike McCall 10 years ago where because we were converting the room from scratch and we had pulled up the flooring, we took the advantage, took advantage of the fact that what was happening, ran a conduit underneath the floor um, and ran the power and everything to the center of the room, which was pretty cool. It was cool because we could do it. And uh, as a result, it's a pretty neat space to being able to walk in and walk all the way around the desk and not trip on anything. So, uh, but I don't think there's any true functional acoustical sound improvement from doing it. Mm. All righty. One last question here from Chelsea Denno. Greetings. I went to school for acting and am continuing to take voiceover webinars today, but I haven't received valuable information on mic technique because they don't teach you that stuff, but we do. Do you guys have any recommendations on where to start learning that aspect of the business? I greatly appreciate it. Yeah, George and I both have videos on mic technique, and we say the same thing. Mic technique is a very simple thing. In voiceover, you got a studio condenser mic, you know, one of these guys. The idea is to have it upside down at eye level, like at the bridge of your nose, your copies underneath, and by having it that way, and you're five to seven, maybe even eight, nine, ten inches away, depending on what your what material you, you're, you're doing. You can go Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers all day long and get no plosives. And you don't have that big black circle in front of you that reminds you that you're on a microphone, which <laughs> people have a P, 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 no plosives here. And you can nope. see right. pop, there's no pop screen on this mic. That's right. And, you know, and I, I haven't used a pop screen in years because, you know, the pictures all show people using pop screens because they're right up close to the mic. But that's not how we talk to people. You want the microphone to capture you as other people hear you because that's how you make yourself sound like you. Yeah. And even if you have to be closer to the mic because the ceiling is right here, or you're in a really small box and it doesn't sound good when you're too far away you're still not going to pop the mic because even if you get closer, you're still going to position the mic like Dan just showed you, or you're going to speak slightly across it so that you're not going to have to worry about popping the mic. You can feel confident that you're not going to pop the mic. And one way you can control that is by putting the script where you need to look. So when you have your mic in one position, your script in another position, you should be comfortably looking at your script and essentially eventually almost forget that the microphone is even there. Exactly. And, As I like to tell, yeah. you know, with, with a lot of the actors that we've been working with, you know, I asked them, if you're a screen actor, do you play to the camera? I mean, in some commercials, yeah, or something like that, but mostly you play to the scene. This is now a camera play to the scene, not to the camera. Good point. The same, same thing goes with the microphone. You really do want to forget that the microphone is there and get into the acting. All right. 
Well, right. We're not we're not doing a, a Celine Dioning. We're not Celine Dioning the mic. Right. You know her thing where she takes the mic and when she belts, she goes Rah! like that, and she pulls the mic way out and she does this. Nope, not doing that one voiceover. Not voiceover. Anyway, great questions, guys. Gotta Thank love you. it when people send us questions because that's what we thrive on. All right. Well, George and I will wrap things up right after these very important messages. So don't go away. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez. And you're enjoying Dan and George on The Voiceover Body Shop. Getting into VO is quite an accomplishment. And accomplishing anything in the world of performance can be really tough. Getting great information is tough. Getting the right advice and mentoring is tough. Simply getting ahead is tough. And the best way to get ahead is to simply get started. Let's make it simple. To get started in voiceover, the best way is with VO Hero's free online course, Getting Started in VoiceOver. You'll learn everything you need to know to create a successful, satisfying, and profitable voiceover career. The link is really simple. Here it is. VOHeroes.com forward slash start. Again, that's VOHeroes.com forward slash start. Get ahead in voiceover simply by Getting started. Go to voheroes.com forward slash start. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. Voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. And we're back to say goodbye but first we have to uh we have to thank a lot of people because this show can't be done without other people you think we just like you know just come in here and turn the switch and hey we're on you want to watch you, you want to see what it looks like when we do the show with just two people go back and watch EWAP yeah, episode number one and watch <laughs> episode number one and see how rough that show was around the edges yeah, I, I think you had to like glue that one together. I really did. It was seven parts. That was 10. You know, we're coming up on our 10th anniversary. That's right. March 22nd will be 10 years we've been doing. <laughs> you know, think of the stuff that we've learned in that in that time of what not to do. I've probably forgotten half of what we learned. I know. <laughs> and, and now we're using another system. And now I got all this equipment here. And I'm like, what am I going to do with it all? Yard sale. We'll all be back together. Uh, who are our donors this week? And we love them all. Yes, we've got Trey Mosley, Thomas Pinto, Shelly Avellino, Sean Daly, Mr. George A. Whittem, that's my dad, uh, Brian Page, Rob Ryder. I think it's Ryder. It's Raider. You wrote Raider. I swear it was Ryder. You so I'm going to say it both ways, and you can dub in the right one later. Okay. Rob Ryder, <laughs> Rob Raider, Patty Gibbons, <laughs> Stephanie Sutherland, Diana Birdsall, Antland Productions, Shauna Pennington Baird, Martha Kahn, Stephen Chandler, Don Griffith, and Diane Merritt. Woo, that's a mouthful. Yeah. We but I'm getting pretty good at reading all those names because I read them almost every single week because they every subscribe. Week. Right. Thank you. Uh, we need to thank our fabulous sponsors too, like Harlan Hogan's Voice Over Essentials, Voice Over Extra, Source Elements Makers of Source Connect voiceover or voheroes.com voiceactorwebsites.com and, and jmc demos also jeff holman for really messing us up tonight with his uh, typos um we messed up a bunch of names and it just i hope we had fun i hope you're having fun at our expense I, jeff yes and we were having a great time uh sue merlino for 
making it happen. She's our technical director and Lee Penny for being Lee. Well, that's going to do it for us this week. Tech Talk is what George and I love to do, and we're happy to bring it to you every other week. And then we do an interview with another great voiceover star every other week. So stay tuned for that. But really, when it comes to your home voiceover studio, you can think about all this stuff that you can add to it. Somebody was asking about it. But the bottom line is, if it sounds good, it is good. I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop. Or VO BS Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. See you next week, everybody. Bye.